Smart Knowledge it's a podcast where we talk about entrepreneurship, self development, challenging norms. We're here. We're live. It's Tuesday, May third. I hope we're caught up by this point, Pop. Hey, I got a bone to pick. Can you hear me? <laughs> pick it. Who picks bones? Rants? How does dogs. that? Dogs and vultures. <laughs> okay. And me. Okay, we'll, we'll keep moving on from that one. <laughs> Tell me about ramp. What's going on with ramp? What is ramp? Try ramp on Twitter is what ramp is. It's our corporate card for, let me get their tagline right, finance automated. Uh, tomorrow, what do they do? Who the fuck is ramp? Why are we here? Credit card for startups. They're they just say a no risk, card for startups. all reward. No, yeah, we're gonna roll no the risk ramp for them, roll. maybe. They de-risk <laughs> right. our platform like crazy. So you tell me how we do a million and a half bucks a year with 30% margins and we have a credit limit of $94? <laughs> $94? That's like my little Tykes visa I got when I was nine and it was co-signed by my parents. Give me a break. <laughs> they, they, got the, they got the fucking, what did you say, Tykes visa? They got the, the training wheels visa card that they just gave us and they're like, here, Play around with it for a little bit, but don't do over a hundred. Ninety-four dollars. I tried. Our Google Workspace account is like a thousand bucks a month. Right, and that's what 90- I hit him up. I'm like, "Yo, dogs, you, you promised me at least fifty-four hundred when we applied." I'm like, "Yeah, but you're supposed to have seventy-five grand in your bank account when you applied, and you got like a thousand. And it's like, yeah, because it goes up and down sometimes, and and then they claim to support startups, and it's like, hey, sometimes we got to invest as bootstrappers. We do it. And you guys are like, $94. Right. Who do they support? It's it's venture-backed startups that have never made a penny of profit in their life. But on paper, well, fuck them. Hey, we scrapping. Uh, I got a couple things. Uh one, hey, we might we might do vlogs now. That's kind of cool. This isn't a business update episode, but I just got excited, and then I got excited about our double blind Ken trial. We're like, hey, we're just gonna. They want vlog people, but we don't know how to do vlogs, so we're gonna take Ken and pretend that Ken's doing all the edits, but really have some other people we're training in the background, but they don't know who's editing. So it's like this, like, oh, this is a dope, a dope edit, and then we tell them later on, hey, it ain't Ken because he's dope. It's some other Jan that just came in the pipeline. That's kind of cool. Uh, another thing I saw, I was walking on my morning walks because I do them now because it, it makes outside me Outside or inside? Outside. <laughs> I just pace around my <laughs> living room. <laughs> no, this is, uh, well, one, it wasn't even, it was a half walk because half I was walking and I had this beautiful uh, sighting of a deer. He was just chilling. They're, they're massive, dude. I get, you know, actually, hey, here's a little detour. You know when Cortez, he came over? Uh, Cortez, I don't. Let okay. me just start off by I don't. Okay, Hernan Cortez. I don't know. What, when did he come to Mexico? Hernan Cortez, Mexico. Probably before. No. Nope. Uh, oh, that's. No. Oh, wow. He was early. Shit. I didn't realize this was around that long. All right. So he. Okay. Ah, I kind of remember this day. I don't. A push. Good for me. Okay. So he came over from Spain and Spain's taken over the Americas, right? Because everyone's sleeping on the Americas and like, hey, there's a bunch of silver out here. We thought there'd be gold, but it's just silver. So he gets here uh, to Mexico. That is, it wasn't Mexico. They didn't, they didn't have states back then. Uh, or some people call them countries. In 1519, he gets here. And now all the natives, all these Aztecs, they're like, yo, one, they think that's a god. And then two, they're like, why is this dude riding big ass deer? Because they didn't know what the fuck a horse was. And they just came up gallivanting like, yo, horse, swords, iron, like bend the knee. And uh, and I realized today why they thought that. Because deer are fucking big, dude. They're, yes, they they are. are a hefty. I mean, they're scared as shit of me because I'm, I'm fucking big, too. But uh, we were just like eye to eye, eye level. Uh, he scampered back into the woods. But we were just looking at each other for a good long while. And... Uh, and I listen to a book. I think of them like rabbits. I like yeah, them more dude, to rabbits, rabbits than anything else. They're ginormous rabbits. It's like a Bugs Bunny, but on all fours. Yeah. And its eyes are going in different directions. Another thing. <laughs> dude, they're so binked out. <laughs> he was, I'm like, because we were like looking like nose to nose. 
But I say nose to nose rather than eye to eye because their eyes go banked. So I'm like, it, can he see me right now? Or is he just pretending to like not be no, moving always, so I don't see him? They got to look at you sideways. <laughs> yeah. Take it the stank eye on you. Uh, and then another thing I realized, I'm like, I... I I kind of like when I get energy, I, I do a little jogging just to like get the heart rate up a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm just so pacing you're telling myself. me if I were to observe you walking in the morning, you might walk for a block, have an interesting idea and then jog a little bit. Jog it out, dude. <laughs> but here's the thing. I was like, I don't know. Jogging is like <laughs> so worst weird. of all worlds because it's like you're you're going too fast. Your heart rate's pumping too much where you can't really focus. Like there's not enough blood going to the brain. So I'm like, oh, I can't listen to an audiobook and jog. So that's why I'm like doing this little sprint stop start. And then I realized I'm like, yo, jogging is just bitch, dude. I'm like, this ain't fun. I ain't get no it's high not. from this jog. I need a, a wind sprint. And so I'm walking on the beach and I'm like, it's kind of fun because this beach, it's really rocky. So it's kind of dangerous, like stepping on rocks because some of them are finicky. So I'm just sprinting on these rocks and I'm like fucking thinking I'm Cortez storming the Aztecs, dude. It's crazy. And it was a lot more fun. I, I got myself out of breath in like a hundred yards of just rock sprinting. And uh, I'm a big fan. You got a you got a really great imagination on you. Dude. I'm I'm happy for that. Dude, I f it was actually it was really it was like if you Storm. saw from saw from Storm. afar, it was like the saddest thing to watch in the world because it's just me like fucking huffing down the beach, just like like bending my knees and shit. Like normally, like when you're not you're not trying to be try hard, you're just like straight legged, like I normally am. But I'm fucking like like you ever see a, one of those Mexico. fast cars on a Baja 500? The suspension yeah. just fucking like that, dude. That was my legs, dude. I was just. Like my eye level stayed the same throughout, but my legs Dude, were eating all the, the differentials. Roll the, roll the chicken gyroscope head right there. That was <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, dude, that was me on the beach, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see, uh, what was that dance show back in the day? It was like this guy Twitch was on it, and they, that was a move where your head just stayed still, and it was, it was dope. Dancing with um, the stars? Y no, that was, that's too mainstream. Uh, like, Hey, Pop, seven minutes, 40 seconds in. Should we give the people what they want or no? No, it's at 10 minutes. I got one more. <laughs> so I was watching Sorry. TikTok. And by TikTok, I mean Instagram Reels because they're very similar. And there's this guy and he, he like shoots an arrow straight up in the air and then pulls another arrow out of his quiver. And he, he like slings something and, and fucking shoots it out of midair. And you're like, dude, that arrow is still coming down, though. And then he turns and it just lands right in his quiver. I'm like, yo, that shit was badass. And then I sent it to my buddy because I remembered as a kid, we had a bow and arrow. And one of our fun things, like, you know how you have the target and it's got the rings? Oh, you want me to sidetrack again because I haven't talked to people yes! in days? Uh, Rory Sutherland, who I'm going to reference in, in like two minutes, he says the problem with bow and arrow, whatever that sport is, is it's shit because you have like in the middle is bullseye and it's worth 10 points and then one outer ring is like nine, then eight, then seven, then six. It's like, it's never fun. She's like, all right, I'm going to try and hit bullseye again. Whereas you take something like darts and you're working your way down. So sometimes you're going to go for the triple 20, but then sometimes you want that triple 17 because you want 51, 52. Did you say 54? Did you say bull and arrow? Bow and arrow? What'd I said you that say? a while back. You've been caught up on that, huh? I've been thinking you're 24 and three quarters and you might have said Bolinero. <laughs> Bolinese wheelbarrow. Run it uh, back. <laughs> Run it back. No, dude. That's what I don't like about the tapes. But point being, uh, yeah, uh, darts is a lot cooler sport than bow and arrow, whatever that's called. Or, uh, archery wheelbarrow, because it's just like, it's more dynamic. Uh, same thing as a kid. Well, same thing. Totally different thing. As a kid, we used to try and play that, but it's boring as shit. So we're like, rather than do that, let's just take the little like target we're aiming at, shoot the bow, uh, shoot the arrow straight in the air, like fucking 100, 200 feet up, and then just run around trying to chase it and see if we can get it in the 10 as we hold it in our hands. <laughs> so we're like running around this kid's backyard with arrows darting down and we're running around <laughs> this. Like if we trip, that shit's going. Proper like, arrows? 
Uh, I think they, they had some sort of tip that like wouldn't kill an animal or a wouldn't human being if you face. ran around with the target. Uh, hey, almost right on the dot, 15 seconds late. Dude. Last question, though. Watch this on YouTube. Last question we might have to answer in the future. Why do deer poop pellets? Do they have more than one stomach? Is that got to do with it? I don't. I don't have the answer. Why do they poop pellets? Oh, you don't know. No, dude. I I just I seen the deer. Do they and eat then berries? I, and then they can't digest the berries. No, nah, dude. There ain't berries. Narragansett is beat, dude. Well, Narragansett is dope. Rhode Island's beat. They ain't got berries out here in the winter. Why do oh, deer do a poop live pellets? Google? A deer's colon works in a rhythm of opening and closing the sphincter. This results oh, in small and round-shaped pellets. So, yeah, you just get the womp, the womp, womp pellet colon. <laughs> the pellet gun. <laughs> they're I'm, huge. You're I telling me really... they're huge? And they've got a colon that big with a sphincter that's just... <laughs> Dude, God just wanted them. He's like, you know what? Let's just play with the sphincter size. Try another constraint and see what happens. Now we got little mounds of pellets all over the, the trails. Learn um, something okay. new every day. Here's what I want to do on this podcast today. Because what we do on the podcast now, I text you this morning. You're like, uh, I don't know what we're supposed to have today, but it's something. Viral thread. Like, viral thread. Supposed to and have that, And you know that, we right? missed explain it like I'm five yesterday. <laughs> to me, they're all the same. It's just what's interesting, I'm going to try and explain it. Maybe it was some viral thread. Maybe it was Rory Sutherland in his book, Alchemy, which this one is. Maybe it was deer pooping on the trail, and now I want to talk about it. Today, what I want to talk about is how do we make taxes cool? Because taxes are, are fucking shitty. I just sent like 15 grand and I think that's only half of what I have to pay. And then you have like credit card debt to pay taxes. And it's like, this shit sucks. Terrible. But in reality, it's pretty dope. Because I look outside and like the roads are paved nice, nice. And I'm like, there ain't crime in the street. Like I go down to Ecuador and everyone lives in this this like little compound where you got literally actually I'll, I'll put the photo up. I went to the mall and they have like uh, prison guard towers all Arm. over the mall. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? They just got scout snipers everywhere, as if someone's gonna come and shoot up this mall at any moment. And I'm like, it's the nicest area in Ecuador. So that's crazy to me. But I'm like, taxes are dope. I kind of like them. Granted, it's like. What is it? Like 50% of the country doesn't pay any taxes. And mm -hmm. I think it's like the top 1% pays like half of them or, or some crazy number like that. Um, so it got me thinking. By it got me thinking, I mean, Roy Sutherland got me thinking. He's like, why are taxes shitty? They're shitty because it's all downside. It's like, you don't really see like where your money goes at all. There's no like, oh, I'm specifically spending it on the street. Like say you get pulled over right now, which... Uh, happen happens all the time like in ecuador it happened we got like a big ass fine you get pissed but if if you saw in the fine it's like hey uh you went too fast like slow the fuck down but thank you for contributing we just patched like three potholes because of this fine it's like oh mm. i lost but at least like i can see where the money's going versus like oh this is just mm. going to a corrupt i don't know police uh department state so that was the first thing. I'm like, okay, it's all downside. Or he was like, it's all downside. It's like, well, let's get creative with it. There was this place. And and like, let's, you know, I like history. So let's go back in time and see where were some places that got a little, uh, a little creative with it. So we had to go back 200 years. All right. Bring us back to when that little guy, Big Dick Napoleon was just treading around Europe going like, hey, I'm the shit. Okay. In like, I don't know. 1805, he's just marching around Europe. He's, he's France, and he just storms right through this place called Prussia, which is basically like Germany plus or minus a bunch of countries around it because they were bigger back then. He goes right we through there, smashes the through. I always thought it was Poland, Russia, Prussia. Uh, no, it's mostly Germany with a little bit of Poland plus or minus some other places and a little bit of Russia. Fuck them. <laughs> hey, it's all the same. It's all like deep. Deep Europe. So he goes through deep Europe, uh, wrecks their shit, and he's in, he's like in this, uh, what do you call that? Uh, occupation. He's just occupying them. The problem is, though, he got a little greedy. We all know he went out to Russia in winter, 1812. He got smoked. And that's also like he had to sell a Louisiana Purchase just to fund his shit over there. Um, 
he got smoked. And now they're on the, the like running back from Russia uh, side of things. Everyone's smelling blood. And so now Prussia's like, hey, I know you wiped us out, made us poor as shit because you took all our resources when you occupied us. But we want our land back. We want, we want to be liberated. So now they're like, okay, we have no money, but we need money. So what do we do? Okay, uh, if I am now this Princess Marianne of Prussia, she's like, uh, according to Rory Sutherland, she did this in 1813, which is right when uh, Napoleon's on his way back. She's like, even though I, according to some sources, she's like three years old at this time. So I don't fucking know. But someone in the high up royalty of Prussia is like, hey, let's try something tricky. Let's make it dope to pay taxes. So they're like, Okay, everyone out there, all you rich people, what we're going to do first, and then hopefully you copy us, is we're going to give our gold for iron. They're like, you know how gold is the shit? Like, everyone loves gold jewelry? That's no longer the shit. Right now, if you're not running around the streets wearing our iron jewelry, you're a scrub. <laughs> or even worse, if you're still wearing your gold jewelry, it's like you're not patriotic. You don't support Mother Prussia. And, and kicking out Mother Napoleon. Prussia. <laughs> so they, they went around and they printed all these things. Hey, let me try my German. Uh, it had printed, Gold gab ich für Eisen. So it's like, uh, I gave gold for iron. And it prints this on Whoa. all the jewelry. So now you're walking around town and you're like, hey, look at all my iron jewelry. I'm the shit. Even though it's literally worth nothing. And so now they, they had this big trend that popped off in Europe called Berlin Iron. Where it's like this, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like chokers. When chokers popped off and you saw like MC and all these hot girls wearing chokers. That's what Prussia did. They just made iron chokers for everybody. And it was the shit. And they raised all this money and that's how they helped kick Napoleon out. So now coming back to today, I'm like, all right, taxes suck to pay. We all hate paying taxes. Well, what if it was like, we got some dope status out of it? So it's like, yeah. you know how you can wear Balenciaga? It's like a brand called Patriot or something. And it's just like you you have to like submit a tax return and, and show you paid over a million dollars in taxes or like a hundred thousand dollars in taxes for you to get like this dope blazer or dope jacket or dope shirt or something like that or like a watch or something. I'm like, that'd be, that'd so be the shit. Now it's yeah. suddenly like, oh, you you supposedly make a lot of money, but like you clearly don't because you didn't pay shit in taxes. And like everyone being like, oh, fuck the rich. They don't pay shit in taxes. It's like Bezos couldn't have this if he pays zero in taxes. But Bezos, you're, you won up Bezos because you paid more. And I'm like, I, I don't know if this is a business idea segment, but it's like if something, if there can be some company that just screens people based on how much you paid, like you have to submit something that proved you paid that much in taxes and you just get some fly merch. You just status well, like I said, signal everybody. An exercise we should do is, oh, well, it sounds, is is rebuild U.S. government from first principles. Mm. Like these incentives have been decided two hundred years ago, four hundred years ago, to a lot, large extent. It would be a fun exercise to go through every element of go government: healthcare, tax, defense, all these things. And think about them for, from first principles. This is an interesting one. It's like, how do we incentivize people to be stoked about paying taxes? And it, it seems like such game. a no-brainer to me. I was even thinking like, like one of the big things is like adopt a highway and maybe they like put your name there. Or like a classic one. I think the ancient Romans did this when they were uh, going around the world. They're like, hey, we got to fund our military. So if you donate, we'll put your name on a big statue. It's like. Oh, that's that's simple as shit. Like, let's just have every town like I guess federal taxes, everybody pays. But like, uh, I don't know, like the biggest federal pay payers could have something in D.C. But it's like in Narragansett, where I live, Rhode Island, it's like, say I'm one of the top 10 contributors to taxes. It's like I get my fucking face and, and name on a big ass plaque when you enter the town. It's like, hey, there's Big Dick Dylan. He helped pay for the schools, like everything. You just get your little like, oh, I'm, I'm awesome. And every single person that comes through sees that. It's like, oh, now taxes are kind of dope because the only way I get my name on that is by paying a shitload. Dude, that's such a good point. We never think about like all the taxpayer money that goes into having good, 
airplane infrastructure in the States. Like, dude, I was in Zimbabwe. I was supposed to get on a flight or maybe it was a friend of mine and I have a false memory, but they were like, yeah, uh, the president wants to use this plane now. So uh, your flight's canceled. And it was like, <laughs> that's, that happens. So I think there's a lot of things we take for granted because we're just focused on that loss aversion of paying taxes. Right. I'm like, taxes don't have to be shitty. They granted, don't have to be shitty. They're shitty the to me as like an entrepreneur. Because I'm like, ah, that's 35% I couldn't invest in us, in ourselves. That really bugs me. Right. But that's also and because I'm not looking at the upside. Right. And it, it gets mass. One other idea, too, was like most people are W-2, so they get their money refunded to them like at, at a certain point in the year. So it kind of sucks when people take money out, but... If it's like, hey, instead of getting all your money back in this refund, uh, you could like donate 50% of it or uh, put it towards this cause. It's like, oh, uh, it, it hurts I think less you can on TurboTax. If it's not really your money. I think I think TurboTax will do that for you. But I'm still like, yeah, I, feel hey, like I want I all that understand. money back. Because I just paid 35% to God knows what, and I'm pissed about it. Yeah, so there's something so there. You're not, I, I think, in the, you're not in the giving mood when you're when you're getting your refund back. You're spiteful, like fucking tax season. Well, April fifteenth again. I'm late. Well, we're worse. Spiteful. I don't know how real taxes work. Uh, point of all of this is like reframing things. Like the money is going somewhere. We just don't see where it's going, so it sucks more, and we don't get credit for donating. Yeah. So it's like this, hey, let's see how much we can cut in taxes versus like, I wouldn't try and find all these stupid loopholes with creating an S corp. If I just had my big ass face in there against it. Now, like all the girls that come through are like, oh, Dylan's got a lot of money. Look at him. He pays taxes. It's like, oh, that that's worth it for me. And now I get yeah. a little status. So recognizing we're all status animals. I think there could be some cool ass business that comes out of that, or at least improving our business as is. And why doesn't sort of like this happen? Merch thing. Is it because the people in office aren't entrepreneurs? What's the incentive? One thing. Yeah, right. There's no incentive. It's like, I mean, a big theme in Rory Sutherland, this book, Alchemy, that I read and I'm probably going to reference over and over. Uh, he's like, in, in most bureaucracies, even most just like big businesses, there's not much upside to taking risk. Like if you make, like no one ever got fired for using IBM playing it's was the classic phrase yeah so it's like oh IBM or this risky ramp startup for like some fucking idea if we go with ramp and it backfires and our credit limit's 94 bucks we're gonna get the shit and we'd get fired by our company because it's like hey we can't pay for our software what are you doing why wouldn't you go with uh, chase for example it's like ah oh, well I heard ramp was dope it's like you can get fired for that versus say ramp is awesome it's just like a little pat on the back so same thing in bureaucracy if you have this crazy idea that's like oh what if we had big statues of the top contributors each year and then like they everyone wants to contribute more? It's like, what is that person doesn't really see any of the upside. So there's no sense in taking that risk. That's why I love private companies and I love like Basecamp mm -hmm. and like Derek Siver. It's like anything you want. It's like, oh, you want to shake up the incentives? All right, well, you own the thing. Go for it. Yeah. Versus now so we got I a $94 credit limit. How this applies to us, uh, I don't really know, but I think it's one of those plays where like, oh, if you've been working with us for X amount of time, you get like some branded clipped gear or like something that's cool. Oh yeah, Somewhere Erica's getting all, uh, we're getting all the shipping addresses for our uh, clients. Yeah, I guess we don't really have the status, but like the nice thing about government is if it's like sanctioned by the US government, it's like oh, this person is badass, that's like the ultimate sign of respect. It's like the U.S. government uh, made in America sort of thing versus like clipped were nothing. So if you're going to wear clipped merch, it's not like uh, that means nothing to, to no one. So this is kind of like that yeah. branding aspect. You know what works really well like this? It's those I voted pins. People yeah. love, or stickers. Right. The I voted stickers. Well, that's the thing. It doesn't have to be expensive. That was actually the original 
idea that Rory had was like, let's just give out little fucking pins that you can put up. And it's like, I paid this amount in taxes. Or what was that? Um, uh, mischief. Mischief had like, however much oh, you pay yeah. for this shirt, we're going to put it on the shirt. So what's the, it's that thing. Some musicians do it. It's where you can like uh, name your price. Right. So you can name any price you want for an item and that's what you'll pay. And this was the name your price sweatshirt from Mischief where whatever you decide you pay for the thing between $100 and like $650, that's what's going to be printed on the sweatshirt. So now you have to walk around with this glaringly obvious, like, this is what I paid for the thing. Are you going to be the douche that paid $2 and you've got that on your sweatshirt? Or do you take the status of having the $600 sweatshirt? That would be so sick if it was like, a shirt that we got, and I don't know the brand, like it's fucking called Liberty or Patriot or fucking something super America. Uh, and it just says, like, the number. It's like 32,815. Oh, and it's like, and and you, it's just like super subtle. So it looks dope. It's got like a little, you know, the, I, like, I like the shirts where it has the trim on the top that's colored. So it's like a red, white, and blue here. And it's just got a number like over the little shirt pocket. And everyone's asking, what's that Should number? It's so like, oh, that's how much I paid in taxes like oh that's kind of this cool. would be so interesting because i can't envision myself ever wearing something like that i would if it wasn't super overt like you know how clipped yeah. here we try and keep it small if it was just like a little number on the patch so it's not like boldly saying it well it's right like, hey, i like I, about this hat that it's like it. well i don't know about wearing something that's like has an identity for me but i like that like nothing about this hat says like I run clipped. It's not super overt. Right. Yeah, so, so I don't know. Patriot what, maybe and it's like, amount. It's interesting. It could just be tears. So it's like, again, over 100K, you get a shirt. Over a, a million yeah, dollars, know. you get a watch or like something. But I don't know. It's it's just uh, a roly. playing around with ideas. So that's that's today. That was my just fucking inspired. Let's change up the incentives on things. Play to people's status. Make things upside, not just downside. And uh, I don't know how it relates to your business, but maybe it does. We'll be a little bit more grateful for uh, all the things we, we get. And this amazing that we don't have Napoleon coming in. through our land. We're not getting invaded. Right. That's kind of dope, mm. not getting invaded. <laughs> that's it. Uh, that's all I got. That's it, Pop. Short and sweet. Isn't it Unless weird we when touch we keep it, it like under 30 minutes? Tight. When we keep it tight. It was one thing. Um, I was going to say we could talk about Ken. Um, I, I think that's interesting. I don't think we force it. And with that, baby, God bless you.